Howdy folks, it's the Creepy Kentucky and here with you again from Dead Pit Radio. Halloween is over folks. October is over and done with. So, here at Dead Pit, deadpit.com, Dead Pit on YouTube, Dead Pit on Patreon, we have decided to make November Key November. Kino has a ton of titles out and coming out that we're going to cover throughout the month of November. A lot of them. A lot. And this is kicking off a brand new sub-label within Kino. Kino Cult. They're doing a whole new labeling system. Look at that. They know how to do it. boys. They're going to number the spines. Kino Cult focusing on cult movies, B-movies from the 70s and 80s primarily. And the first one up is a guy that we kind of have a love-hate relationship with Jesus Franco, Jess Franco. Spanish filmmaker, erotic horror cult B-movie Spaniard of a filmmaker from back in the day. The folks over at Savoring Films love Jess Franco. They love him to death. We've reviewed a few of his movies over the years. And none really have been that impressive to me. Until now. Now, it's not for the reasons you may think. A lot of the Jess Franco movies we'd reviewed before, some, some of the horror cult movies, this is bringing us into erotic horror lesbian stuff right and what creepy kentuckian cannot appreciate that so today we're taking a look at lorna the exorcist a name that's very misleading to be honest with you and a cover that's really not not very misleading because most of the movie is just two girls going at it both who i mean what's not not like two damn good looking girls going at it, right? Lena Ramey being one of a very young Lena Ramey. Uh, this one's from 1974. It was believed for many years to be a lost film. The original camera negatives were destroyed back in the day in a lab fire. And for years and years and years, no one had seen this movie. And I think Mondo Macabro did a DVD of this thing. A while back the dvd is out of print and was going for huge money until this blu-ray edition came out they spliced together a variety of different 35 millimeter prints to make a complete version of lorna the exorcist and today we are going to take a look at the debut release from kino cult jess franco's lorna the exorcist in Lorna the Exorcist, Guy Lorme plays French businessman Patrick who wants to take his family on a vacation. And an old friend by the name of Lorna, played by the lovely Pamela Stanford, shows up and it turns out that she was more than just an old friend to Patrick. She was his ex-lover who holds a bizarre power over women, in particular his sexy 18-year-old daughter, Linda, played by Lena Romay. There's definitely something devilish, baby, going on with Lana. We don't know exactly what it is, but there is some amazing lesbian scenes with those two girls going at it for most of the movie. A little bit of false advertising here. There's really no exorcism or exorcist or anything. I do believe they were cashing in on the popularity of William Friedkin's The Exorcist, which was just released a year prior. There is some really weird shit uh, going on with this movie, such as crabs coming out of a woman's coochie. She's got crabs coming out of her pussy, folks. Crabs are coming out of her pussy. This movie is very bizarre, and parts of this movie must be seen to be believed. Now, ultimately, this is kind of an erotic movie disguised as a horror movie. There are horror elements and death involved in this movie. But the majority of the movie is just a lot of that good old-fashioned rug munching 
that we all know and love from back in the day. There's a lot of bush in this movie, right? And I'm not talking about Gavin Rosdale. There's just a whole lot of bush going on. I've not been the biggest supporter of Jesus Franco over the years, but this is one that I actually just got a kick out of and enjoyed. It's beautifully shot. Um, there's some beautiful women in this, namely Lena Romay and Pamela Stamper, beautiful, two gorgeous women from back in the day. And this is a very interesting release. Now, the video quality on this is not the best in certain areas. Some scenes look great and some very rough. And that's due to them basically Frankensteining a cut of this together in 35 millimeter and cleaning it up and cleaning it up as best they can. So I definitely want to commend Kino Lorber for taking the time out to do what they can, clean this transfer up. I'm sure it's similar transfer to the DVD version that Mondo Macabro did. Not everybody's going to get into this. If you're wanting straight up horror goodness, this one is not for you. This is kind of a mixture, mainly a softcore porno, to be honest with you. Um but with a couple of really beautiful women. So if you're down for that sort of thing, this is something you'll definitely want to check out. Now this is a limited numbered edition uh, from Kino. It comes with a slip cover. Now I do need to preface, this is not the typical Kino slip cover. This one is like a very flimsy one. Okay, so I don't want people to get impressions that this is the same slips that Kino normally does. This is a very light one. It's almost the thickness of a Blu-ray sleeve. But anyway, same artwork on the other side as well. And just your disc art there. Now, there are some special features in this too that I wanted to mention and bring up for you guys. Let's pull the menu up and take a look. There is an audio commentary by novelist and critic Tim Lucas. Interviews with actress Pamela Stamford, filmmaker Gerard Kikane, and an interview with Stephen Thrower, the author of Murderous Passions, The Delirious Cinema of Jesus Franco. And this does include both the English and the French audio tracks with English subtitles. So ever how you want to watch Lauren of the Exorcist, you have the option, right? So... Yeah, guys, that is it for the review. Not a whole lot to talk about. Some great lesbian sex scenes. Wanted to put that over. The two girls, the two lead girls in the movie. Very nice to look at. You know, there's, it's a very bushy movie as well. And um, yeah, what else can I say? I've never really reviewed a movie like this before. But guys, this one is out now. This is number one in the Kino cult line. Check it out if it sounds like something up your alley. Check us out. We're over at deadpit.com. Give us the thumbs up. Off your butt. Like, subscribe. And if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a fuck. I don't want you to. I want you to. <laughs> let's, let's keep our community growing here on I, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, I need to do that. No, don't you yeah. have to do Thumbs up. Subscribe. Click that bell. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpits.com. Simply the best horror shirt. On T Public, there are others, but they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit Radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The Hills have eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're going to love them. Shop.deadpit.com. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows, fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. 
Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears started at only one dollar. Yeah.